Lover Water Mom Nick. I'm Dom. Noah. From Top Notch Sports, today we're going to be over the 2023 Survivor Season 44 recap and review of Episode 3. Ladies and gentlemen, first things first, I want to say this. All right, we are going to be the number one surviving podcast when this is all said and done. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, we have some of the best personalities like here. 10. I'm, t- I'm telling you, I'm telling you, there's nobody can match up with the enthusiasm and what we got as a team. Is that donut good, Dom? It's fantastic. It is great. So listen, long story short, we're going to have Tony here on the next episode. Hopefully, hopefully we'll have everybody here for once. <coughs> Noah, I'm, feel, I'm feeling a sickness coming on next Friday. <laughs> for a while. All right. Before we get into anything, yada, yada, yada. Episode two was great. Episode one was great. Now we're going into episode three. So now let's hit our intro. <music> All right, we are back. Here we go. So, episode three starts off with Kane. Okay, he is a character saying, Oh, Canada. What's your guys' thoughts on Kane? Dom, I'll start with you and then I'll go down to Noah. I had a feeling he was Canadian just because of the accent, but uh, it was majestic, very, very beautiful. Beautiful boy. What do you think, Noah? I was just very confused the whole time. (laughs) I had no idea why he was singing it or why they were showing it. It was so beautiful. Can you say? It was fine. All right. It was fine. What a what a nincompoop. All right, here we go. So long story short, going into this episode, we all kind of had concerns that Tiga was weak to start, right? We said Bruce left. Then we had Helen leave. And then we were like, well, th- this group is really, I mean, what are they going to do? Are they going to be able to win the challenge? You know, all they, all they got is Carson, Jam Jam, Carolyn, and Sarah. And, you know, Right away, right off the shenanigans that we see Carson right away trying to side with Sarah now, right? Because you know Jam Jam and Carolyn have a really tight connection. I think the three of them, I think Carson's part of that too. But if push comes to shove, I think we can all believe that it would be probably Carolyn and Jam Jam together. So you see Carson start to play the middleman here, right? He starts to try to align with Sarah now, trying to make it, you know, a tight duo. And Sarah's saying, you know, Carson's probably the most dangerous. You know, she said he's so likable. And she even said that, you know, she likes him the most, and, you know, that just shows you how dangerous he is. So, you know, is he becoming a target is a big question. So, Dom, I'll let you mention this first. I mean, what do you think about Carson playing the middleman here on Tika? And then Noah will go to you. So, Dom, start with you first. Yeah, him gaining that trust with everybody is dangerous. He did the same thing with Helen. He plays a, that that two-face or, hell, maybe four-face, whatever, he he has his own specific per, uh, his personality with each person or each duo, and that is really dangerous because like you don't know if he's telling the truth, you don't know if he's lying. And I think like back in episode one, I said back that he may not have that strength to vote that person out if he has that type of relationship with that said person. I think he does now. He's shown it that he's willing to do whatever he needs to do mentally to win this game and I or win this show. So I think he is very dangerous and one of the most dangerous pe- uh, people on the show as of right now. Absolutely. And that kind of sets up with him, you know, being this dangerous. Now people are going to want to put a tartar on his back because you don't know necessarily where he does align. So Noah, I mean, making this as, you know, he, he's making this clear. I mean, how does that affect his game here, being the, the survivor expert? Uh, traditionally, the people like Carson are the people who win. I just think he did it too early, and it's going to end up biting him in the ass because no one's going to trust him by, like, two or three tribals after the merge at the latest. I'm assuming Tika doesn't go to the next two tribals, and he's kind of just screwed. But I don't see him winning just because of how aggressive he's playing, basically. 
Yeah, I mean, he's playing aggressive by not playing aggressive, which is kind of interesting. Like Russell Hand said, you know, I'm coming for you, and he came for you. Carson's like, oh, you know, I'm going oh. with the numbers, you know, I'm cutting your head off, but yet, you know, don't take it. Uh, look, great. I, I, I like him a lot. With a smile. Huh? You cut your head off with a smile. Yes, there's a difference. And that's more dangerous than Survivor. I'll be honest with you. What, Dom? What? No, nothing. It was just a little. All right, so that's that, okay? We talked about that, yada, yada. You know, you got Tiki. We talked about Kane. Now we're going to go to Soka, you know, a tribe that we didn't really see much of this episode that we see a lot of. So first things first, Danny found the idol in the last episode, and now he plants a fake idol. And Noah, you mentioned this to me before you watched it. You said, imagine if he plants and I couldn't hold a straight face. What What the hell? How, how do you know? Um... It seemed like a smart play, and he was smart enough to be like, hmm, maybe I should put that bag back in the birdcage. I mean, he's lucky he wasn't on a – what's purple? Tika? Tika, Tika. yeah. Tika, they they were like examining that. They're like, huh, those drawstrings look a little uh, used. He did not yeah, close but... that bag well at all when he put it back this time. No, he did if, not. You, if you watch closely, it looked like it was almost open at the top. Yeah. Honestly, if someone tried, they could probably reach into the birdcage and grab what's ever inside of it. And that just shows you how smart Carson is again. Because Carson and Helen, I think, were the two that actually noticed that it was – I think Carson's the one that really brought it up. But then I Helen also think it too. Carson was compulsively staring into that birdcage. Yeah. Which I'm yeah, surprised Jam Jam thinking. wasn't at it because he thought it was candy. <laughs> <laughs> the guys are great. The guys are great. All right. So, anyway, Danny finds Idol. He plants the fake Idol. Now he kind of sets Matt up. They're looking for his, oh, yeah, you know, you got to really dig around there. And then Matt finds it. Matt shoves it in his pants or whatever. You know, he brings it back. You know, old Matt, you know, he says he's a nerd. You know, him and Franny. Now Danny has him right where Danny knows he has it. Danny confronts him in front of, you know, I believe it was Josh. And, Mm -hmm. you know, and now he, you know, Matt says, oh, no, I don't have anything, you know. And then actually, you know, he comes out and tells Josh, no, I do have it. You know, he's just going to. Say he has it, but he just wants to keep it between just them. He doesn't want it to be between everybody. He truly believes he has a true idol. No word. I'll start with Don. Don, what the hell do you think? I mean, this guy thinks he has it. When he's in danger, he might play it, and that's going to be the craziest thing ever because it's going to be absolutely nothing. He has a sense of safety, but it's false. What do you think about that? Well, there, uh, when he was in that like that interview stage, there was something that. Actually, no, it wasn't in the interview stage. It was, what he, it was when he was with Franny, if you notice, that he said, we have the idol, as in him and Franny. I, like, I kind of saw that coming because a couple episodes ago, or the podcast episodes ago, I said that he was going to like team up with Franny and nobody else. Like He was going to use the relationship with Franny. And it this can really like screw him. Like both having the fake one and just being that trustworthy of Franny. Cause I think in this episode, it seemed a little bit that Franny knows that she has Matt on the, whatever, like, you know, she has him on a hook. She said it herself. He's very malleable to her. That's what she said. That's what Franny said. So I think this could be really dangerous for him. And I can't expect him to go much longer, to be honest with you. Yeah, right now they kind of have him right where he wants to know. What do you think about Matt and the whole situation and Soka just in general? Before we go into what actually happened. This is it is amazing because we see the other fake idol at some point in the episode, but fake idols and Survivor have been hit or miss. Some have been – the first couple were literally just like rocks or coconuts with faces drawn on them. Yep. <laughs> and they didn't even have like the – half the time they don't even have the note because people are keeping from themselves. But now you got people hiding fake idols, and it's changes the game a lot when someone could have a fake idol and have no idea or someone could hand someone could like plant a fake idol for you to find. Yeah. And then, I, what do you think that does? I mean, do you like that? I mean, you've watched, like we said, we crown you as an expert. You watch a lot. Do you, you like do the way it's changing it or not so much? I would have preferred if Survivor didn't give them the fake idols, but I mean, Matt from orange made his own anyway. So the people will make their own and some people do a much better job because Danny's is literally the fake thing they gave him to use. Matt's looks almost identical to the actual one. But again, in the past, we've seen some really, really stupid fake idols. And sometimes some the work. stupid... The stu- uh, Rupert, the one season, literally just had a rock in his pocket that worked because people thought he had an idol and got scared. 
Anything could work. Anything. I mean, for God's sakes, this could work. Exactly. Yep. A purple exactly. rock. All right. Just don't let them see it. Rod to the Orange Tribe. Okay, the final tribe, and then we'll talk about the challenge and the tribal council. You know, Brandon's been great. We we knew that from the beginning. Brandon's been great for that tribe in general. Thank goodness they didn't vote him off in the beginning because he's providing for that entire tribe. He's going out, he's fishing, he's getting food. He talked about his football story. I don't really like again, I love to listen to the story, but I'm just saying, as a guy, like as anybody on a tribe, he's out there providing, getting fish, getting food getting, you know, providing for a tribe. If they didn't have him, they wouldn't be able to do that. Now, again, not only is he providing, you got Jamie, like the ringleader kind of provide. She's a fun leader, you know? She's the one eating worms, you know, they're drinking. Oh, just disgusting. I would never do that. But hey, she's like, you got to try. It's an experience you'll never forget. She's doing all kinds of stuff. And then we got Jamie and Matt looking around for an idol. And Jamie finds the idol. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's amazing. And then we find out that Matt planted it. Survivor tricked us all. Because they like show us a flashback saying, no, Matt planted this. He found the idol and he planted a fake one, a fake one that he made, like Noah said before. So Jamie truly believes that she has the idol and her and Matt are these plant lovers, plant mommy, plant daddy something you know, lady, they're, they're like <laughs> something and they're together. And Matt's like, yeah, no, I have you right where I want you. And I'm here to play this game to win. So, Dom, I'll go to your your opinion on this and then to Noah. Uh, like very shocking. I would have. I, hell, I didn't even expect this from Danny. So let alone seeing it from Matt is very, very shocking and unexpected. And honestly, it's very impressive because I would have never expected a guy like Matt to do that type of thing. And doing it so well, because he was very creative with it. If I'm not mistaken, he g gained materials and fixed it up and kind of made it look like it, like he made it look legit. And he hit it in a beautiful spot. I'm going to assume that's the spot he found it in the first place. I can't remember from the flashbacks, but no. But he all right, so then that's a new spot he found that he put. It was very clever. He's a very, very clever, uh, clever um, player. And he's shown it today, and it's very, very cool. No, what do you think? Uh, Survivor has done – they've hidden idols in similar spots to that one, so it made sense. Uh, th they've done them where they're in the camp. They've done – they had one season where it was, like, buried below the water well, and that one he just, like, hid in the wood. It was obvious enough that someone would definitely find it, but hidden enough that you would think it's actually an idol. Like, he didn't just throw obvious. it out. He didn't like throw the package in the oven and be like, oh, did someone drop that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so long story short, I mean, it was a it was a good play by Matt. And now Jamie thinks he really has something. And again, it's just it's just crazy. And nobody knows Matt has it. So I mean, that's just even more brilliant. All right. There's all that. Now we're gonna get to the stuff, the challenge. They go to the challenge again. I'm there. I, you know, I you guys know I'm a fan of Tika. I mean, what's your guys' favorite tribe again? If you had to choose one before this episode. Uh, I was in the very beginning, I was like stuck on Tika, but and then it fought between Satu or the orange tribe and then the uh purple. But I think I'm still purple as my favorite Tika, Tika versus Ratu. No, what do you think? Ratu. What was your favorite tribe? Satu. I kind of like Soka, but I think that's because of this past episode. Because before this, we didn't really know they existed at all. Yeah, before that, probably Tika. Okay, so we're all fans of Tika going into this. So we all also thought that Tika was at the biggest disadvantage. And, you know, you go out there and, you know, and before we even get into anything, you know, they have to have people sit out. And Claire elects to sit out again for a third time. Now, again, Jeff even said, are you sure you want to do this? And she said, yes. You know, I feel like this is going to get Martine to the best chance of winning. Well, right then and there, that was a third time she sat out in a row. The only challenge she participated in the entire time was the first one. Again, I like Claire a lot. I really do. I just feel like it's unfortunate. And, you know, so she doesn't participate in this. Soka has been undefeated. They have not lost a single challenge. She's trying to put her team first. She doesn't feel like she'll do good. Okay? They start going. Tika is at an early disadvantage. They're not winning. They're not doing good. Carolyn's up there trying to throw the ring off the thing. She's swatting it, swatting it. You know, Carson's telling him how to roll the thing. Jam, jam, pulling it up and pushing it. You know, but you got Danny. You got Josh. Guys are real 
fit, you know, on the green tribe. Heidi and everyone pushing that thing, doing really good over there. On the orange tribe, you got Brandon alone who can probably do it. Kane's another big guy, right? Just doing it with Jamie, okay? They're struggling, Purple is, right? Jam Jam's trying his hardest. They're the last ones to get to the island. But the only thing I didn't notice, Jam Jam's the first one up on the beach. <laughs> yeah. No, he left yeah. before him. He's the first one there. You know, Carolyn's the last one there. She's huffing and puffing, but now you got Danny digging the sand. You know, he is nonstop going, going, going. You got Brandon digging out the sand. You know, on the other tribe, Danny gets underneath it. Brandon gets underneath it. The purple tribe's still going. I don't remember who was the first person through on purple. It was Sarah Caroline. Sarah, Caroline. all right, they get through. That, the that's what teams through. usually do. They they send through a small person. Sarah, I think. Have, yeah. No, it's Carson. It's Carson. Oh, was it? Honestly, yeah, Carson's you're, you're the right. same size as either Carson. of the women on that team. Yeah. So they get through. Jam, Jam, now Jam Jam's, Jam's the last through. one. Pull me, He's pull like, me. They pull him through. They get Jam Jam through. All right, now they're through. Now it's going to come down to one of the biggest parts, the puzzle, right? Who's going to win this? Well, now again, you know, I've been saying this entire time. I think Carson's the smartest guy on the entire show. But we see here, right, just be – and Jeff kept saying it. It was almost like he it was trying to rub it in a little bit. Just because you have 3D printers and stuff doesn't mean that you're going to do it live. And no, you said he said this multiple times before. But again, he said that so for years. you got the two, what they say they're nerds. So I'm going to go with nerds, Franny and Matt, trying to figure out the puzzle. You got Jamie and, uh, shoot, who the hell was it? Jamie and somebody else was it. Who was it? Jamie and somebody else doing it, working the puzzle for the orange. I honestly don't remember. But I do know it was Jamie. Did any of you? Matt? No. No. Matt, no, no, Matt, Matt, really hurt, no. Matt hurt his shoulder again. Wasn't really doing that much. Yeah. Who that? Not Kane. Not Brandon. Lauren? No, she sat out, didn't she? She might have. Who else is even there? Maybe it know. was Matt. It might have but... been. I don't remember who it was. But anyway, they're doing it. She gets it done first. I find out, you know, later on because of her Twitter and stuff, I think she said basically that she's been practicing these her whole life. Like someone made one for her and she was able to practice. So, again, that shows you that they have experience doing these things. Okay, great. Orange is done. Now it's between Soku, who's undefeated, and Tika. And neither of them are getting anywhere. And I'm getting nervous again because, I, you know, I like everyone on Tika. We don't really know much about Soku yet. I want them to go to a tribal council. So now they start stealing from Orange. Carson runs over, you know, you got Franny and Matt running over. Carson runs back, then he goes back, runs back over, looks at it again, you know, trying to figure out what it is. Runs back, whispering to Jam Jam a few things. Runs back, looks, runs back, here where they go. They start building up. The top piece falls off. They build it up again. Yada, yada, yada. Tika ends up winning. Carson and Jam Jam get it done. And not only that, I also want to mention, Jam Jam's a strong man. <laughs> that dude's carrying blocks by himself. And then he's not only doing that, he's also narrating. Jim Jim got the block. You know, that was just great. That's just great. So not only is he doing that, he's also doing Jeff's job. All right. Soka's gonna go to the first tribal council. Now, let's talk about that. And then I'll mention my final piece, which is gonna be a possible merge that we've been talking about. Soka goes. Okay. Dom, your prediction is Claire's gonna go at the last episode. Okay, me and Noah have been saying Matt and Franny because. They had that relationship. Going into this now, Don, what are your thoughts? Claire didn't do it again. What are your thoughts here? I'm still 100% thinking it's Claire, especially since she sat out. And if you noticed in the, in the little huddle, I heard somebody say, all right, fine, whatever. Obviously, that's showing some annoyance in some people. I think that was Josh who said it. Somebody said it. And obviously, that just showed some annoyance. And I just think anybody would get upset and annoyed that – if you're sitting out in three challenges and you're not contributing whatsoever, you know, we're going to want you out of there. And honestly, I it just, it just seems like a no brainer to me. And then she uses excuses saying that she said a whole bunch of stuff. I can't think of the things out top of my head, but wanted she wanted me to sit out. You thought it would help. And I, I wasn't going to fight against you. And, and she then like, said all the stuff a lazy person would say when they don't want to do stuff. And then she also added that she would do good if if he, if she contributed, but she didn't contribute. You know, like she didn't do it. That's that was her choice. Even, uh, in the second one, it was just like it, every single time she said it, it was her choice and not hers. No, so, what do you uh, think of this whole thing? Yeah. Survivor so used to not let you sit out more than once in a row because they had the two challenges an episode, and they're like, that seems a little unfair. 
So, th and then they got rid of that since it's now one challenge per elimination, which is interesting. I think they should go back to the old way where you can't sit out multiple times in a row because otherwise stuff like this is going to keep happening where you see someone whose team starts out doing really well, they finally lose a challenge, and they're like, well, who's the weakest link? Because that's usually who the first person out is. There's exceptions, but the first one out is usually the one time when it's actually for tribe strength. After that, it's by that point, by the second tribal a team goes through, there's usually alliances and a whole bunch of other stuff going on. Absolutely. All right. So that's that, right? We got the whole situation with that going on, et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, clearly when you're not doing it, like, like, Jeff, well, let me go back to this. Jeff said this, Jeff said in his thing, in his podcast, he said that, like you said, with the multiple challenges, it used to be, you had to choose whether you want your weakest link in for, you know, your rewards challenge or your immunity for safety. Do you want to be able to eat something or do you want to have, you know, safety? You had to choose. Now since they only have one, I like two better personally, but I understand they go to one and now they let the choice. He did say he put it on his whiteboard though, whether or not they're going to necessarily keep it like this now. Meaning, you know, can you sit out multiple challenges at, you know, the, just the one challenge, an episode, if that makes sense. So you can't sit out multiple episodes in a row, like how it used to be. Besides now there's not a reward and an immunity, it's just immunity. Besides that, let me just get this thing, keep this thing rolling real fast. So Soka, you know, they got to choose one. We like said Claire with that situation hasn't participated. But now you also have a brilliant opportunity to take out Matt and Franny, who possibly have, a you know, an immunity, right? And they're that relationship. So why don't you do that then? Let me add, I mean, Noah, let me ask you real fast. I want to get this going. What do you, why don't you take this opportunity to take them out there? They want to win and just not have to worry about it. They're playing to get to the easiest situation for them, which is, well, if we get rid of our weakest link, we won't lose as much, so we don't have to think about tribal as much, which is they, they all seem to like each other a good amount, which makes that easy, and there hasn't been any big backstab yet, which is when you start to see people go, huh, kind of hate that person. But th they all kind of get along, so it's a situation where none of them want to be voting each other out. Yeah, no, I, I mean, again, it, it's, it's a situation where we got to look at and we got to say this. And another thing, when there's not twists and turns and tribes are starting to get twisted and, you know, they start to slide certain people together and form tribes. And, because back in the day, no, they would already probably make these three tribes into two tribes or something, right? Probably would have been this episode. Oh, wait, I'm trying to think numbers wise. How many people did we have? Now 14, I think now, 14, 15. Mm -hmm. There's 14 now, so it would be the next episode probably you'd see them merge into two tribes of seven. Yeah, which see, or I would like, like too. two episodes in, they would merge into two tribes of eight. But at that point, you barely even know anyone, so it's not. Yeah. When they did all the tribe swaps and they'd swap three times in a season, you got to a situation where what tribe you were on didn't really matter unless you formed a really close connection with people. I think they're trying to get back to how it used to be where if your tribe gets to the merge with all six people and the other two tribes are like three or four each, you just got to bring over one person and bam, you're getting yourself to the final seven or eight before there's an inevitable backstab, which always seems to happen. So, yeah. So long story short, though, like you said, though, I mean, knowing that they're probably not going to switch, or at least that was the idea here, they don't really have to really worry about, you know, they just want to worry about tribe strength because if they can just get their guys in there, right, then they're going to win. I mean, then they don't got to worry about tribal council over and over again. So this doesn't, you know, they can bring Matt and Franny if they feel like they're stronger in challenges and they don't got to go back and there's not going to be a switch up, then it's all right that they're together because we're going to be in it soon. You know what I'm saying? As long as they win, that furthers them in the game. Okay. Enough said with all that. They go to tribal council. All right. They get there. What's your guys' thoughts? I mean, Noah, who did you think at this point who was going to be going? I thought it was clear. There was a little bit of time when I had some doubt, but not really. Wasn't looking too good, no matter what. Uh, yeah, she she almost convinced one or two people, but I don't think she would have been able to get two. And the whole thing is, too, remember this, too, is that Matt didn't somebody have a vote. Didn't, didn't have a vote. And that's something that's definitely going to hurt her chances. Again, because if Matt has a vote, she's in this. And then Heidi or someone might flop over. So long the, the issue is Matt was the other vote. Uh, yeah. Matt was the other person getting votes. So it's not like she could convince Matt to vote for himself. Yeah, absolutely. But again, if Matt 
it had a vote going or in. No, Josh she was the other vote. Yeah, yeah. So again, Matt would have probably voted all for Josh, and she would have been all right. But all right, here we go. She throws her shot in the dark, and ultimately, it's not safe, which is very unfortunate for her. She gets voted off. Final thing I want to mention. I want to mention two quick things, and then we're going to do a prediction, and that's it. First thing I want to mention, the merge. We predict the merge. We predict it. I'm going to still stay with it. We said either the next episode or the following episode, a form of a merge or a switch up, whatever it may be. We feel like it's coming, right? I mean, I think, like, if it's if they're going to do it, it's going to come either the next episode or the following episode, correct? Mm-hmm. Sound. If they're doing a switch up, I'd probably say next episode. If they're waiting for the merge, I'd probably say two or three. Okay. All right. So there's that. The next thing I want to point out is something else. And again, I'm going to ask all of you about this, a survivor rookie, a survivor and expert, and then myself. Something that's been getting mentioned a lot, and this is a hot topic issue right now. With the three challenges, they're saying women are at a disadvantage. And I can see this for sure. What, what Who have been voted off so far? Three women. And it's been, I believe I read something yesterday saying, at the last all survivors since I've been doing this, I think 10 out of the 11 or 10 out of the 12 people that have been voted off have been women. Because again, People think that the women aren't the strongest for these physical challenges. So I'm going to start with Tom. Do you believe that it actually has a little bit of something to do with it in the sense of, you know, they look at women as not maybe as physically strong, and that's why they're getting voted off because they don't want to go back to tribal council. So Tom, I'll go to you, then Noah, and then we'll wrap this up. Well, at least in this season, no, I don't think so. Uh, they almost, uh, Orange Tribe, they almost uh, took off their most strongest player. Uh but they ended up going with somebody else purely because of just his luck. Uh, same with Josh. He almost gets b- bounced off, and he's one of the strongest. Like, I don't think, at least for this season, I can't speak for others. I think this season, that's not true. In majority, it's just been circumstances that have gotten the women out. Like with Lauren, it's just, I mean, she had bad luck. Um one of the first oh, Lauren, who are you thinking helen helen uh, helen sorry not lauren uh and then one of the uh, whoever the woman was on the purple tribe that got voted off that was kind of bad luck purple was helen Brandon had his orange was maddie or is it or i'm sorry i'm orange sorry maddie got unlucky because brandon had his immunity so like i yeah i don't think i don't think that's true no that, what do you think Noah? it's all women uh it does play a role this season, I think this was the first travel where it was actually the reason because Maddie got voted out because Brandon had the idol. So his vote was the only one that ended up counting and she tried to vote him out. So he had a very good reason to get rid of her. But I think before they decided on Brandon, they were actually talking about voting out one of the women for tribe drink. So it's kind of there. Purple, n- not really at all. They, they, they're all like, yeah, we don't really have James James is the only one on the team is really strong. And they were thinking Carolyn, and then they're like, "What about Helen? She's kind of, she's kind of hard to trust." So it was never they're the weakest. It was Carolyn's weird and Helen's untrustworthy. This past one was entirely, yeah. She, Claire is the weakest person on the team. We should get rid of her so we don't lose. Yeah. So like I said, I'm gonna wrap this up with me. I believe I do not like this format necessarily with three tribes. And you know, I'm a person that's saying I'm. Be- I think it is leading to more of a chance of women getting voted off. I do feel like it's leading to more of a chance of them getting voted off because when you only got, you know, three tribes of six, you are going to like, they're looking at every time, like, you know, tribes, they are, they have been looking at women, like every single time so far, it is a chance. So I don't like it. I don't like this format, but with that being mentioned, I don't feel like that's been the reason for the women getting voted off, especially this season. I can't speak for other seasons. Like we just said, the Maddie situation, well, you're going off against, you're trying to get the strongest. I mean, you can go against any other one. You know what I'm saying? Like, Brandon was the strongest, you know? Maybe Matt, he had a dislocated shoulder. Go after him. You know, Kane, go after him. You know, so that one, I, and like we said, Brandon had an immunity idol. So they, if I'm not mistaken, Brandon, there was only one vote towards Maddie, right? And he had the idol. for Brandon, one for Maddie. Or Brandon, two for Brandon, one for Maddie. So, yeah, I think it was two and one. There was only three and votes. And then the one person didn't have the vote because of the yeah. weird thing they did in the first episode. So that one, I can't really say it's like that either. But again, the chance was there because, again, the other person. But again, Brandon had no intention on voting off Maddie because she was weak. It was because it was untrustworthy. The next one was the Green Tribe, Soka, oh. right? This last, well, sorry, no, like, purple. purple, Tika. Tika Tribe, Helen, like you said. Another thing, they lose Bruce. They lose her. 
I, I don't, I mean, really, I mean, I don't know if I can sit here and say, you know, I, I don't feel like it had anything to do with that personally. It's unfortunate again, but it just happened. I mean, again, it could have been Sarah, it could have been Carson. You're not going to vote out Jam Jam right now. He's a strongest. And I think that Carson, looking at Carson, I feel like he could be one of the most athletic there right now. You know, I mean, he he's built. So he's I, athletic. I, I, I just don't think he has the brute force, force. that that tribe needs right now. And that tribe not, needs someone like Jam Jam to just be able to pick up one of those. Uh, yeah. Just chuck it. And last but not least, you know, we go to Soka. And again, it's just, it's unfortunate. But this try, I really did feel like, hey, you know, I, you haven't participated. I, I Again, I was fighting for Claire's thing to actually say safe because I would like to see a twist there. But again, you know, it's just at that point, she, she was going after Josh, I think it was, right? Was the other one? Yeah. So, I mean, if she went after Matt or Franny, I think they had a dang chance, you know, and it was possible. But just again, I mean, I, I don't know. I think there's a point to be made. I don't know if I'm survivor if I'm continuing this format because I think it is putting women at a disadvantage. But I feel like this season so far, I don't think it strictly has to do with because they're women. You know, I don't think that they're getting you know discriminated against in this aspect for this season specifically. All right, last thing, we talked about all that. We're gonna do two things, Dom. First, we're gonna do the you rock rock. Who do you got this week? Uh, very hard decision, but after seeing him finally more, uh, I would have to give it to Danny for him being clever and very smart this episode. And he just seems like a survivor. He seems like he's built for this. You know, he's, he's got that lying or not the lying. He's, you know what I mean? He just, he's got that fake face and he's got that survivor personality and he's got the cleverness and the smartness and the athleticism. And I think he definitely deserves it this week. I like that pick absolutely. No, anybody you want to put for the honest A block of the week? Uh, I'm gonna go with Jamie because of the challenge. Basically, that was the the rest of she stuff she does kind of is mad at me. I don't think her tribe wife's gonna save her long enough into the season, like some people might think it could, and it has in the past. But I'm not feeling it with her. Okay, I like both your picks. Now we're going to do the final thing here. The last and final thing. If the tribes stay the same, next episode, Tika, Soka, Raktu. Who do you got voted off? Let's start with Tika. Dom, who do you got this week? Tika, purple, right? Yep, who yep. do you think? If, if one had to be voted off, who do you got? Mm. Dom's up in the lead. Dom's 1-0. and So, I mean, I know the guys that we mentioned, we, me and Noah both took the 0-1 loss, so got to keep track. But, Dom, who do you got? We got a minute 45, so we got to be Carson. fast. Carson gets voted off. Noah? Sarah. I'm I'm either saying Sarah or Jam Jam because I don't think I like Carolyn unless they blindside Carolyn, but I'm going to go Sarah. I'm going to go Sarah. I just don't see. Carson could try to get one of the power two out if it's the case, but I just don't see it happening. All right, next. Let's go to Soka. Green. Dom, who do you got? Um, I got uh, Matt. 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 Yeah, Matt. Officially, Matt. No, who do you got? I'm going with Dom. I think it's Matt. You know, last episode I said Matt. No, you said Franny. I'm switching it now. I'm going Josh. I'm going Josh. I feel like somehow that power couple is actually going to end up somehow working out now. They're going to last another thing. So I, I think somehow they're going to turn around to Josh. I don't know how that is going to happen, but it's going to happen. Last but not least, we got less than a minute. We got to go uh, Raku, Orange, Dom. Who do you got? Uh, The uh, Jamie. Jamie, Noah? I'm going with Kane. Kane, all right. I said Kane last time. Now I'm going to go and... <laughs> yeah, I'm going Kane. I'm going Kane. All right, that's all from us. If you have any questions, be sure to comment in the comments just below. We'll love to see you guys soon. Next episode on Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern. We're going to be doing another podcast. We'll see you guys soon. Peace. We are Dolphetters.